Al Araf, the elevated places, with the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Alif Lam Mim Saad, I am Allah, the best knower, the most truthful. This Quran is a glorious book, revealed to you that you may warn the erring therewith and that it may be a source of eminence and honor to the believers. Let there be no constriction in your mind on this account. People, follow the message which has been revealed to you by your Lord, and follow no patrons as you assume them to be, apart from Allah. How little heed you pay to admonition! So many a rebellious township have we caused to be ruined. So our punishment visited them by night, or while they were taking their midday rest. So that their cry meant nothing when our punishment came upon them except that they apologizingly said, Truly we were wrongdoing people. We will then invariably question those to whom the messages were sent, and we will certainly question also the messengers. We will certainly relate to them True facts with exact details, having full knowledge of them, for we were never absent from them when it came to pass. On that day, the weighing, the judging of deeds, will be just and true. Then he whose scales of good deeds are heavy, it is these only who shall attain their goal. And those whose scales are light, and their deeds of little account, it is they who have made their souls suffer losses because they have been unjust with regard to our messages. People, we have indeed established you in the earth, giving you power therein, and provided for you therein various means of subsistence. How little thanks you give! We did determine you, then we gave you shape, then said to the angels, Make submission to Adam. So they all submitted, but Iblis did not. He would not be of those who submit. God said, What prevented you from submitting when I commanded you to submit? Iblis said, I am better than he. You created me from fire, whereas you created him from clay. God said, Get down from this haughty state for it is not proper for you to behave proudly here, so be gone. Surely you are of those who have agreed to remain in an abject position. He, Iblis in impertinent defiance, said, Grant me respite till the day when they are raised up again. God said, Surely you are of those already given respite. Iblis said, now, since you have adjudged me to be perverted and lost, I will assuredly lie in wait for them on the straight and exact path that leads to you. There will I come upon them from their front and from their backs, and from their right and from their left, so that you will not find most of them grateful to you. God said, Get out from this state, despised and driven away. Be sure. Whosoever of these human beings follows you, I will certainly fill Jehenna with you all. And we said, O Adam, dwell you and your wife in this garden. Then eat when and where you like, but do not even approach this tree, or you both will become of the transgressors. Then Satan made an evil suggestion to them both, with the result that their shortcomings, which were hidden from them, became manifest to them, and he said, Your Lord forbade you from this tree, only lest you should become angels or become of the immortals. And he ardently swore to them both, saying, Most certainly I am one of your sincere advisers. Thus he led them on the way of guile and deceit, and when they tasted of the tree and committed the things forbidden to them, their shortcomings became manifest to them. They, in order to cover themselves, began to stick the leaves of the garden over themselves, and their Lord called out to them both, saying, Did I not forbid you from approaching that tree? 
and tell you that Satan is to you an enemy disuniting? Both of them said, Our Lord, we have done injustice to our souls, and if you do not protect us against the consequences of our faults and do not have mercy on us, we shall surely be of the losers. God said, Get down from this land. Some of you are indeed enemies of others. And there will be for you on this earth a habitation and enjoyment of provision for a while. And he added, In this very universe you shall live, and therein you shall die, and from it you shall be brought forth in the hereafter. O children of Adam, we have given you a raiment that covers your nakedness and is a source of your elegance and protection. Yet the raiment that guards against evils, that is the best of robes. That is one of the commandments of Allah so that they may attain eminence. O children of Adam, do not let Satan put you in trouble in the same way as he turned your parents out of the garden, stripping them of their raiment of innocence with the result that their shortcomings were made manifest to them both. Verily he sees you, he and his tribe, in such a way as you see them not. Verily we have made Satans friends of those who do not believe. And when they, the disbelievers, commit an act of indecency, they say, we found our forefathers practicing on it, and it is Allah who has enjoined it upon us. Say, surely Allah never enjoins indecencies. Do you attribute to Allah what you do not know? Say, my Lord has ordained to be equitable and to keep your attention upright towards him always in your every prayer and to call upon him exclusively bearing true faith in him. As he brought you into being in the first instance, so shall you return to him again. There is a party whom he has guided aright but there is another party straying has become an established fact with them. Verily they have taken the evil ones for friends to the exclusion of Allah, yet they deem they are rightly guided. O children of Adam, look to your elegance by dressing properly at every time and place of worship, and eat and drink, but exceed not the bounds, for he does not love those who exceed the bounds. Say, who has made unlawful Allah's beautiful things of adornment and elegance which he has produced for his servants and the delicious and pure things of his providing? Say, they are primarily meant for the believers and for the disbelievers too in this present life, but exclusively for the believers on the day of resurrection. In this way do we explain the messages for a people who would know. Say, Verily my Lord has forbidden all acts of indecency, open and hidden, and every kind of sin and aggression, which is never justifiable. And he forbids you also to associate with Allah that for which he has sent down no authority, and to say concerning Allah that which you do not know, that it is in fact said by him. For the end of every nation, there is a term fixed, so that when their term comes, they cannot delay a single moment to avoid it, nor can they get ahead of it to escape from it. O children of Adam, whenever there come to you messengers from amongst yourselves relating to you my messages, then whosoever by accepting them becomes secure against evil and amends, there shall remain no fear on them, nor shall they grieve. But those who cry lies to our messages and turn away from them disdainfully, it is they who are the fellows of the fire, where they shall abide till long. Who is more unjust than he who forges a lie in the name of Allah or cries lies to his messages? It is these who shall continue to have their lot of the book as ordained by Allah until there comes the time when our messengers, the angels, come to them to take away their souls. They, the angels, will say, 
where is now that which you used to call upon besides Allah? They will reply, They are lost to us, and they will bear witness against themselves that they were disbelievers. He, God, will say, Enter into the fire along with the communities that have passed away before you, from among the jinns and ordinary people. Every time a new community enters it, it curses its sister evil-doing community, until when they have all followed one another into it, the last of them will say with regard to the first of them, Our Lord, these led us astray, so give them punishment of the fire over and over again. He will say, Everyone is having his punishment over and over again, but you do not know about one another. And the first of them, their leaders, will say to the last of them, the followers, If we are to blame, you too are no better than we. Suffer therefore the punishment of your evil deeds. Be sure those who cry lies to our messages and turn away from them disdainfully, the gates of the spiritual firmament shall not be opened for them, nor shall they enter paradise until a camel passes through the eye of a needle. In this way do we award punishment to those who cut their ties with Allah. They shall have Jehenna for their bed, and above them awnings of fire for cover, and thus do we requit the wrongdoers. As for those who believe and do deeds of righteousness, we charge no soul except according to its capacity. It is these who are the rightful owners of paradise, where they shall abide for ever. We shall strip their hearts of whatever rancor there may be for others. They shall have streams rolling at their feet, and they shall say, All perfect and true praise belongs to Allah, who guided us to attain to this paradise. We could never have been led aright to this if Allah had not guided us. The messengers of our Lord did come to us with the truth. It will be proclaimed to them, This is the very paradise which you are made to inherit as a reward of your good deeds. The owners of paradise will call out to the fellows of the fire, We have found what our Lord has promised to be true. Have you too found what your Lord had promised to you to be true? They will say, Yes. Then a herald will proclaim amongst them, Let the disapproval of Allah be on these wrongdoers, who hinder the people from Allah's way and seek to make it look as crooked and who are disbelievers in the hereafter. And between the two, the fire and the paradise, is a barrier. And on the elevated places there shall be men like the prophets and other exalted spiritual dignitaries who will recognize everyone by his appearance. And they shall call out to the prospective inmates of paradise, Peace be on you. These prospective inmates of paradise will not have yet entered therein, though they will be hoping for this entry. And when their eyes are turned towards the fellows of the fire, they will say, Our Lord, place us not with these wrongdoing people. The occupants of the elevated places will call out to certain men from the fellows of the fire, whom they will recognize by their appearance. Behold, neither your multitude nor that amassing in which you took pride have been of any avail to you. Are these owners of paradise, the ones about whom you swore that Allah would not extend his mercy to them? Allah has ordered them, enter paradise. No fear shall remain on you, nor ever shall you grieve. Now the fellows of the fire will call out to the owners of paradise, pour down upon us some water, or, or give us some of that which Allah has provided for you. They will say, Allah has forbidden them both to the disbelievers. Those who took their faith for a futile and frivolous thing, causing diversion from Allah, they were beguiled by the worldly life. And God will say, 
So on this day we shall forsake them as they forsook the idea of meeting of this day of theirs, and as they denied our messages deliberately. Although we had brought them a book, which we had made clear with knowledge, as a guidance and as a mercy for a people who believe. Do these disbelievers just await the final sequel of the warning thereof? The day its final sequel comes, those who had forsaken it before in this life would say, The messengers of our Lord did indeed come with the truth. Have we now any intercessors, so that they may intercede for us? Or could we be sent back, so that we might act otherwise than we used to act? They have indeed ruined their souls, and that which they used to forge has failed them. As a matter of fact, your Lord is Allah, who created the heavens and the earth in six eons, and at the same time he is well established on the throne of authority. He covers the night with the day which follows the night incessantly, and he created the sun and the moon, and the stars all subservient to humankind by his command. Beware! His is all, the creation and the command. Blessed be Allah, Lord of the worlds. Call upon your Lord with humility and open supplication. In fact, he does not love the transgressors. And do not create disorder in the land after the fair ordering thereof, and call on him with fear of his displeasure and with hope of his mercy. Surely the mercy of Allah is always close to the doers of good to others. He it is who sends the winds as good tidings, heralding his mercy, till when they, those winds, bear heavy clouds, find them light. We drive the clouds to a dead land, then we make it rain. Then we bring forth from the dead land, by means of that, all manner of fruit. That is how we will bring forth the dead so that you may achieve eminence and honor. And as for the fertile land, its vegetation comes forth flourishing and well by the leave of its Lord. And that land which is inferior, its herbage comes forth but scantily and that too defective. That is how we expound our messages in diverse ways for a people who give thanks. We sent Noah to his people. And he said, O my people, worship Allah. There is no one worthy of worship for you other than he. Surely I fear, lest there should befall you the punishment of an awful day. The chiefs of his people said, Surely we see you steeped in evident error. He said, O my people, I am in no error, nor am I lost. Rather, I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. I deliver to you the messages of my Lord, and I advise you sincerely, for I know from Allah what you do not know. Well does it make you wonder that an exhortation leading to eminence and honor has come to you from your Lord through a man among you, so that he may warn you and so that you may become secure against evil, and that you may be shown mercy? But they to whom he delivered his messages cried lies to him. So we rescued him and those with him in the ark from the deluge, and we drowned those who cried lies to our messages. They were certainly a spiritually blind people. And to Ad we sent their brother Hud. He said, O oh, my people, worship Allah, you have no deity other than he. Will you not then guard against evil? The unbelieving chiefs of his people said, We surely see you in folly, and in fact we deem you one of the liars. He said, O oh, my people, there is no foolishness in me. On the contrary, I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. I deliver to you the messages of my Lord, and I am to you a counselor, sincere and trustworthy. Do you wonder that an exhortation leading to eminence and honor 
should come to you from your Lord through a man from among you, so that he may warn you? Remember his favor when he made you the rulers after the people of Noah, and increased you vastly in respect of your bodily constitution by making you stout and strong and tall? Remember then the favors of Allah so that you may attain the goal. They said, Have you come to us that we may worship Allah alone and renounce that which our fathers worshipped? Bring down on us the punishment you threaten us with, if you are of the truthful. He said, There has already fallen upon you the punishment and the displeasure from your Lord. Would you dispute with me regarding mere names of your false gods which you have coined, you and your fathers, names in support of which Allah has sent down no authority? If so, then wait for the consequences. I too am with you among those who wait. So we in our mercy saved him and his companions, and we rooted out the last remnants of those who cried lies to our messages, for they would not believe. And to Thamud we sent their brother Salih. He said, O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no other God but him. A clear proof has already come to you from your Lord. Here is a she-camel let loose for the cause of Allah, a sign for you. Let her alone to pasture in Allah's land, and do her no harm or a woeful punishment shall overtake you. And recall his favor when he made you the ruler after Ad, and assigned you abode in the land after your sufferings. You build castles in its plains, and hewed houses out of the mountains. Remember, therefore, the favors of Allah, and do not commit mischief in the land, acting as creators of disorder. The chieftains of his people, who considered themselves strong and great, said to those who were reckoned weak, to those of them who had believed, Are you sure that Saleh is one sent from his Lord? They replied, Surely we are believers in that message he has been sent with. Those who considered themselves great and strong said scornfully, Lo, we are disbelievers in that which you believe in. So they hamstrung the she-camel, and flouted the commandment of their lord, and said, O oh, sorry, bring down on us the punishment you used to threaten us with, if you really are one of the sent ones. So the earthquake seized them, and the morning found them lying prostrate on the ground in their habitations. Then he, Saleh, turned away from them and said, lamenting upon their disaster, O oh, my people, I delivered to you the messages of my Lord, and offered you sincere advice, but you do not like sincere counselors. And we sent Lot, and recall when he said to his people, do you commit such abomination of sodomy as is unprecedented and unsurpassed in the whole world? You indeed approach men rather than your women to satisfy your lust. The fact is that you are a people who transgress all limits. His people had no reply to make but that they said to one another, Turn them, Lot and his followers, out of your township, for they are a people who show off to be pure. And we saved him and his followers, except his wife, who chose to be of those who stayed behind. And we pelted the rest of them with a severe rain, a rain of stones due to volcanic eruption combined with an earthquake. Behold, how evil was the end of those who cut off their ties with Allah. And to the people of Midian, we sent their brother Shu'aib. He said, O oh my people, worship Allah, for you have no one worthy of worship other than him. A clear proof to this effect has already come to you from your Lord, so give full measure and full weight, and do not cheat people of their goods, 
nor create disorder in the land after the fair ordering therein. This indeed is best for you if you are true believers. And do not sit in every path holding out threats to the wayfarers and turning those who believe in him away from the path of Allah and seeking to make it appear as crooked. And remember his favors when you were but a few than he multiplied you. Behold, what was the end of the spreaders of corruption? And if there be a party of you who believes in what I am sent with, and a party who does not believe, then wait with patience until Allah judges between us, for he is the best of judges. The chiefs who considered themselves strong and great among his people said, We will certainly turn you, O Shu'ib, and also those who believe with you, out of our township, or else you all shall have to revert to our creed. He said, What? Shall we be forced to accept your creed even though we are unwilling at heart? We should indeed be forging a lie against Allah if we revert to your creed after Allah has delivered us from it. And it is in no way possible for us to revert thereto unless Allah our Lord should so will. Our Lord comprehends all things in his knowledge. In Allah alone do we put our trust. O our Lord, decide between us and our people rightly, for you are the best of all who open the truth. The chiefs who had disbelieved from among his people then said, If you follow Shu'ib, you shall then truly be of the losers. Then they were caught up in an earthquake, and the morning found them lying prostrate on the ground in their habitations. Those who cried lies to Shu'ib became so extinct as though they had never dwelt therein. Those alone who had cried lies to Shu'ib were the losers. So he turned away from them and said, O oh my people, I did deliver to you the messages of my Lord, and I did offer you sincere advice. How can I lament over a disbelieving people? And never did we send any prophet to any township, but we afflicted its people with destitution from our blessings and with tribulations so that they might grow humble before the Almighty. Then we brought comfort for them in place of their distress until they grew in affluence, number and excess and said, Surely tribulations and prosperity visited our fathers also so it is a normal course of events. So we seized them unawares while they perceived not the peril they were in. And if the people of the townships had believed and guarded against transgression, we would invariably have opened for them the gates of blessings of the heaven and the earth. But they cried lies to the prophets, so we punished them on account of what they used to accomplish. Do the people of these townships feel secure against the coming of our punishment upon them by night while they are asleep? And do the people of these townships feel secure against the coming of our punishment upon them in the early part of the forenoon while they are engaged in futile and frivolous worldly pursuits? Do they feel secure from the design of Allah? No one at all feels secure from Allah's design except the people who are doomed to be losers. Does it not serve as guidance to those who have inherited the earth from its previous occupants that if we will, we can afflict them with some punishment for their sins and put a seal upon their hearts so that they will not be able to listen to some guiding advice? Such were the people of townships. We have related to you some of their news. Their messengers did indeed come to them with clear proofs, but they would not believe because they had cried lies to them in the beginning. That is how Allah seals up the hearts of the disbelievers. We did not find in most of them any regard for the observance of their covenant. Indeed, we found most of them disobedient and transgressors. Then after these messengers, 
we sent Moses with our signs to Pharaoh and his chiefs. But they did injustice to these signs by denying them. Now see how bad was the end of the mischief makers. And Moses said, O Pharaoh, truly I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. I stand upon it, worthy to say nothing in the name of Allah but the truth. I have indeed brought to you a clear proof of my truthfulness from your Lord. Therefore let the children of Israel go with me. Pharaoh said, If you have indeed come with a sign, then bring it forth, if you are of the truthful. So he, Moses, flung down his staff, and behold, it was a serpent plainly visible. And he drew forth his hand, then lo, it was shining white, blemishless for the beholders. The chiefs of Pharaoh's people said to each other, This fellow here is most surely a skilled sorcerer who desires to turn you out from your land. Now what do you advise? After their deliberations, they said, Put him and his brother off for a while, and send to the city's heralds, who would collect and bring to you every skilled sorcerer. And the most reputed sorcerers came to Pharaoh. They said, We shall indeed be richly rewarded if we be the prevailing ones. Pharaoh said, Yes, and you shall also be even of those drawn near and close to me. They said, Moses, either you present first what you have, or shall we be the first ones to present? Moses said, You may present first what you have. And when they presented their devices, they cast a spell on the people's eyes and sought to strike awe into them and they came out with a mighty enchantment. And we sent a revelation to Moses, saying, Cast your staff now. Then it began to destroy, as he did it, all their lying show. So was the truth established, and all their efforts to frustrate it proved vain. Thus they, Pharaoh and his people, were vanquished then and there, and they went back humiliated. And the sorcerers were impelled by divine mercy to fall down prostrate. They, the sorcerers, said, We believe in the Lord of the worlds, the Lord of Moses and Aaron. Pharaoh said, Dared you believe in him before I gave you permission? Surely this is some secret device which you have devised in this central city that you may expel from it its inhabitants. You shall come to know, then, the consequence of your doings very soon. I will certainly have your hands and your feet cut off on alternate sides on account of your disobedience. Then will I crucify you to death, one and all, making your death all the more painful. They, however, remained firm and said, Never mind, we have all to return to our Lord after all. And you find no fault in us but that we have believed in the signs of our Lord when they came to us. And we pray to him, Our Lord, pour forth upon us patience and perseverance, and grant that we die in a state of complete submission to you. Then the chiefs of the people of Pharaoh said to Pharaoh, Will you leave Moses and his people free to create disorder in the land, and to desert you and your gods? He said, we shall certainly go on gradually killing their sons, and will let their women live. Surely we are dominant over them. Moses said to his people, Pray to Allah, imploring him for help, and be patiently persevering. Verily the earth belongs to Allah. He gives it as a heritage to such of his servants as he will. And the happy end is for those who become secure against evil and keep their duty to Allah. They, the persons of superficial thinking of the children of Israel, said, We were persecuted before you came to us, and are being persecuted even after you have come to us. Moses said, It is well nigh that your Lord will destroy your enemy and make you rulers in the promised land, and then he will see how you act. And we surely seized Pharaoh's followers with years of drought and scarcity of fruits and children, so that they might take heed. 
but when something good came their way, they said, This is ours, as we deserved it. And if something adverse befell them, they would attribute their ill luck to Moses and his companions. Beware! Surely their deeds are recorded with Allah, but most of them do not know this. And they said to Moses, Whatsoever sign you may bring to us to cast a spell upon us with it, we will not be believers in you at all. Then we sent upon them widespread death and destruction, caused by storms, epidemics, and the locusts, the lice, the frogs, and the blood, signs, all distinct and well defined. But they continued to behave arrogantly, for they were a people who had cut off their ties with God. And whenever a punishment fell upon them, they said, O Moses, pray for us to your Lord, invoking the promise he has made to you. If you avert the punishment from us, we will certainly believe in you, and we will let the children of Israel go with you. But no sooner did we avert that punishment from them, up to a scheduled term which they were to reach in all events, than they at once broke their promise. We then inflicted the last punishment on them. We drowned them in the sea, for they had cried lies to our messages, and were heedless of them. And we made the people who were deemed weak, and were oppressed, inherit the eastern and western parts of the promised land which we had blessed. Thus was fulfilled the most gracious word of your Lord, in favor of the children of Israel, for they had patiently persevered and we annihilated all that Pharaoh and his people had wrought and what they had erected. And we brought the children of Israel across the sea. Then they came to a people who clung to some idols they had for worship. They said, O oh Moses, make for us a god like the gods they have. He, Moses, said, You are a foolish people who act through lack of knowledge. Verily, as to these idolaters, that cult of idolatry wherein they are engrossed is doomed to be shattered, and utterly vain is all that they are doing. Moses added, Am I to seek for you a God other than Allah, whereas he has made you excel the peoples of your time? And recall the word of God, when he said, We rescued you from Pharaoh's people who subjected you to the worst torment. They gradually went on killing your sons and let your women live and thus sought to make them immodest. And in this indeed was a great ordeal from your Lord. And we made an appointment with Moses for thirty nights and days to pray in solitude, which we supplemented with another ten to receive the law, so that the period appointed by his Lord came to be full forty nights. When leaving, Moses said to his brother Aaron, Act for me, taking my place in my absence among my people, and reform and manage them well, and do not follow the way of those who create disorder. And when Moses came at the time and place appointed by us, and his Lord spoke to him, he said, My Lord, reveal yourself to me that I may look at you. He said, You cannot stand my revelation. Yet look at the mountain, and if it stands firm in its place, only then you shall stand my revelation. Then when his Lord manifested his glory to the mountain, he sent it crashing down into pieces, and Moses fell down unconscious, so that when he recovered he said, Glory be to you, I turn towards you, and I am the first to believe. He said, O Moses, Verily I have preferred you to all the people of your time by entrusting you with my messages and by my discourse with you. So take firm hold of that which I have given you and be of the grateful. And we preserved in writing for him on the tablets all kinds of precepts and clear details of everything which the children of Israel needed. Then we bade him, Hold them fast and bid your people to carry out its best teachings in its true significance. I will soon show you people the resort of the transgressors. I shall soon turn away from my messages 
those who behave haughtily in the land without any justification even if they witness every possible sign they will not believe therein and even if they see the path of rectitude they will not adopt it as their way but if they see the way of error and falsehood they will adopt it as their way this state of theirs is because they cried lies to our messages and they were heedless to them and those who cry lies to our messages and the meeting of the hereafter vain and void are their deeds they shall only be recompensed according to the nature of their deeds and the people of moses in his absence made out of their ornaments a calf a mere frame of saffron hue with a lowing sound could they not see that it neither spoke to them nor guided them to any way yet they took it for god to worship and became wrongdoers and when the magic spell was broken they were smitten with remorse and realized that they had indeed gone astray they said unless our lord have mercy on us and protect us against the consequences of our sins we shall surely be of the losers and when moses returned to his people indignant and sorrowful he said how evil is that course which you adopted in my place in my absence did you seek to hasten on the command of your lord for punishment and he put down the tablets and caught hold of his brother by the head pulling him towards himself he aaron said son of my mother surely i am not to be blamed for it these people deemed me weak and were about to kill me therefore let not the enemies rejoice over my misery and count me not with these idolaters he moses said my lord protect me and my brother and admit us to your mercy you are indeed the most merciful of those who show mercy the lord said in answer to moses's supplications the displeasure of your lord and disgrace in the present life shall surely overtake those who took the calf for worship that is how we do repay the forges of lies with punishment but those who do evil deeds and turn with repentance thereafter and believe truly shall find that your lord after this change in them is indeed great protector ever merciful when the anger of moses calmed down he took up the tablets these inscriptions contained guidance and mercy for all those who hold their lord in awe with every care now moses selected from his people seventy men to take with him to our appointed place and time but when the earthquake seized them he said my lord if you so willed you could have destroyed them as well as me before this but would you destroy us on account of that which the foolish among us have done this matter of the calf is nothing but an ordeal from you that you may distinguish the good from the bad of us you adjudge by such means to be astray whomsoever you will and you guide whomsoever you will you are our patron protect us therefore and have mercy on us for you are the best of protectors against the consequence of our faults and ordain for us what is good in this world and in the hereafter for to you alone we turn repenting he the almighty said as for my punishment i inflict on whom i will but my mercy embraces all things so i will ordain it for those who guard against evil and spend in charity and for those who believe in our messages those who follow this perfect messenger the arab prophet whom they find described in the torah and the evangel which are with them who enjoins upon them that which is right and forbids them that which is wrong and who makes lawful for them all the pure and good things and makes unlawful all the impure and bad things and who relieve them of their heavy burdens and shackles that weigh them down indeed those who believe in him and honor him and serve him and follow the light that has been sent down with him it is these who will attain their goal say o people i am a messenger to you all from allah to whom belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth 
There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but he, who gives life and causes death. So believe in Allah and his messenger, the Arab, the prophet who believes in Allah and in all his words, and follow him so that you may be rightly guided so as to reach the goal. There is a community among the people of Moses who guide the people to the truth, and with it they dispense justice. We divided them, the people of Moses, into twelve tribes according to the ancestral lineage to which they belonged. And we sent our revelation to Moses when his people asked of him something to drink, saying, Strike that rock with your staff. Then, as he did, there gushed out from it twelve springs, so that all the people now knew their respective drinking place. And we outspread the rain clouds to be a shade over them, and we sent down for them manna and quails, saying, Eat of the pure things wherewith we have provided you. And they did us no harm when they went wrong, but it was to themselves that they had been doing harm. And recall the time when it was said to them, Dwell in this township, and eat therefrom when you will, and pray. Relieve us of the burden of our sins, and enter its gate submissively. If you do so, we will protect you against the consequences of your sins. We shall multiply the reward of the doers of excellent deeds. But those amongst them who were unjust changed the word to something different from that which they were told. So we sent down upon them unavoidable punishment from heaven because they had always been wrongdoers. And asked them as to what happened to the people of the township which was on the seashore of the Red Sea when they profaned the Sabbath. On the day of their Sabbath, their fish appeared to them in shoals upon shoals on the surface of the water. But on the day when they did not observe the Sabbath and fishing was open, it did not appear to them. Thus did we go on making a distinction between the good and the evil ones of them by means of their acts of disobedience. And asked them what happened to those people when a section from amongst them said to another section, why do you admonish a people whom Allah is going to destroy completely, or whom he is going to punish with a severe punishment? They answered, We do it so that it may serve as an excuse to be absolved from blame before your Lord, and that they may become secure against the punishment. But when they disregarded the warning that had been given them, we saved those who forbade evil, and we seized those who did wrong with a serious punishment of extreme destitution because they were exceeding the bounds of obedience. So when they insolently refused to keep away from that which they were forbidden, we condemned them to be as apes, despised. And imagine the time when your Lord proclaimed to the children of Israel that he would certainly continue to subject them till the day of resurrection to the people who would afflict them with the worst torment. Verily your Lord is quick to punish the evil, but he is all the same great protector, ever merciful. And we broke them up into separate sections of people on the earth, of which some are the righteous and some otherwise. And we went on distinguishing the good among them from the evil ones, through prosperity and adversity, both so that they might turn to us. Then there succeeded them an evil generation, who, having inherited the scripture of Moses, go on taking the paltry goods of this base life and say, We shall surely be protected, and if the like of these goods again come their way, they will take them and sin persistently. Were they not bound to the covenant mentioned in the scripture that they would not say of Allah anything but the truth? and they have read for themselves what it contains. And the abode of the hereafter is better only for those who become secure against evil. Have you then no sense? And as to those who hold fast to the scripture and establish worship, let them bear in mind that we will not at all allow the reward of those who set things right to be lost. And make them recall the time when we shook due to the quake the Mount Sinai, 
above them, as though it were to be a shade above them like a wall, and they thought it was about to fall on them. We said, Hold fast to that which we have given you, and remember its contents, that you might become secure against evil. Behold, when your Lord brings forth from Adam's children, from their loins, their offspring, and makes them bear witness to themselves when he says, Am I not your Lord who sustains you? They say in evidence which human nature itself bears, Yes, we bear witness to it and acknowledge it. Allah does that lest you should say on the day of resurrection, Surely we were unaware of this, that you are our Lord. Or lest you should say, it were only our forefathers who associated partners with God in the past, and we only happened to be their children who came after them to follow in their footsteps. Will you then destroy us for the vain doings of the perpetrators of falsehood? And in this manner do we explain the messages in detail in order that they may give up evil ways and that they may turn to us and relate to them the news of him whom we gave our commandments, but he withdrew himself therefrom. The Satan followed him with the result that he became one of those led astray. Had we so willed, we would have exalted him in ranks thereby, but he remained inclined to the material things of this world, and followed his low desires. His case, therefore, is like that of a dog. If you bear down upon it, it lolls its tongue out, or if you leave it alone, it still lolls its tongue out. Such is the case with the people who cried lies to our commandments. They do not give up their evil ways whether you warn them or not. So narrate to them the account of the people of old, that they may reflect. Sad is the case of the people who cried lies to our commandments and it is their own selves that they have wronged. Those alone are rightly guided to whom Allah shows guidance, but whom he adjudges to be astray and leaves them in error, it is these who are the losers. And verily we have created many of the jinns and the ordinary people whose end is Jehenna. They have hearts wherewith they do not understand, and they have eyes but they do not see with them the truth, and they have ears, but they do not hear the messages with them. They are like cattle, nay, they are even worse. It is these who are utterly heedless to the warnings. And to Allah alone belong all the fairest and most perfect attributes, so call on him by these, and leave alone those who deviate from the right way with respect to his attributes they shall be repaid with punishment for their evil deeds. And of those whom we have created are a community who give true guidance to the truth, and who dispense justice therewith. And as for those who cry lies to our messages, we shall lead them to destruction, step by step, in a manner unknown to them. And I give them respite. My device is very strong and sure. Have they not reflected, so that they may see that their comrade has no vestige of insanity, but is a plain warner? Have they not pondered over the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth, and everything that Allah has created? And have they not looked into the fact, that it may be that their own term of destruction has already drawn nigh? In what announcement other than this will they believe? Whomsoever Allah adjudges to be astray and leaves in error, there can be no guide for him, and he leaves them alone in their transgression, blindly wandering in distraction. They ask you about the hour, when it will come to pass. Say, surely the knowledge thereof is with my Lord. He alone will reveal it at its proper time. It shall be heavy on the heavens and on the earth. It shall not come upon you but all of a sudden. They ask you about it as if you were curiously solicitous about it from Allah. Say, the knowledge of it is only with Allah, but most people do not know this fact. Say, 
I have no power over bringing any gain or avoiding any harm to myself, save to the extent that Allah will. And had I known the unseen, I would surely have secured a great deal of good for myself, and no harm would ever have come to me. I am only a warner to the wicked, and a bearer of good tidings to the people who believe. It is he who has created you from one living entity, and from the same stock that he created a human being, he brought into being his mate, that he might find comfort in her. When he covers her in conjugal relationship, she conceives a light burden and carries it about. Then when she grows heavy with the child, they both pray to Allah their Lord, saying, If you give us a good one, a child with a sound mind and a sound body, we shall surely be of the grateful to you. But when he gives them a good child, they both ascribe to him associates in respect of the birth of that child which he has given them. Allah is highly exalted far above the things they associate with him. Do they associate with him as partners those who create nothing but are themselves created? And they, the associated gods, will have no power to give them who associate partners with Allah any help, nor can they help themselves, but will themselves perish. And if you, O polytheists, invite these associated gods for your guidance, they will not respond to you. It makes no difference to you whether you call them or you remain silent. Verily, those who you call upon besides Allah are merely helpless maids or servants like yourselves. If it is not so, then call on them. They should then make a response to you if you are right. Have these false gods feet with which they walk? Or have they hands with which they hold? Or have they eyes with which they see? Or have they ears with which they hear? Say, Call upon your associate gods, then contrive you all against me, and give me no respite. Yet you will see that I am triumphant, because verily my protecting friend is Allah, who has revealed this perfect book, and he takes into his protection all the righteous. And those whom you call upon besides him have no power to help you, nor can they help themselves. And if you call these polytheists to guidance, they will not even be able to hear you speak. And though you see them as if they are looking at you, while as a matter of fact they do not see anything being absent-minded as they are. Take to forgiveness, and ever forbear and enjoin the doing of good, and turn away from those who intentionally want to remain ignorant. Should any imputation from Satan who spreads reports for sowing dissension, afflict you, then seek refuge in Allah. He is indeed all-hearing, all-knowing. Verily, as for those who really wish to guard against calamities, when some enraging suggestion from Satan assails them, they remember Allah and his guidance, then behold, they begin to see things in their true light. And their brethren, the human associates of Satan, draw them into error, and they do not relax in their evil designs. And when you do not bring to them a fresh revelation, they say, Why do you not forge a verse and invent it as a revelation? Say, I only follow what is revealed to me by my Lord. These Quranic verses are enlightening and proofs from your Lord and source of guidance and mercy from Allah for a people who would believe. Hence, when the Qur'an is being recited, give ear to it and keep silent to remain attentive so that you may be shown mercy. Keep on remembering your Lord in your mind with humility and awe, and in a voice not loud, in the mornings and the evenings, and do not be of the heedless. Verily, those who are near to your Lord and feel his presence with them do not wax too proud to worship him but they glorify him and prostrate themselves in obedience to him. Sajdae Tilavat Prostration